Anything, and I'm gonna go Thursday night, man. Amen. You should have been here last night. But anybody here besides me expecting God to do something even greater again tonight? Amen. I found out that Leah's church phone, we don't know how to come expecting God to do anything. Amen. But we need to expect God to move, and I believe that God will supersede our expectation tonight, and that we can experience the miracle signs and the wonders that the Bible said would follow them that believe. Amen. Amen. So we praise God for our being here again on this night, this last night of revival. Amen. The absence of Pastor uh, Amen uh, Wilson. Amen to, to Pastor Butler. Can we give God praise for Pastor Butler and his wife? Amen. We give praise and honor to him, the visionary and the founder of this wonderful, wonderful church. I preach at churches all over the place. Amen. Every pastor is not as hospitable as this pastor. Amen. I'm going to be honest. Some of them just mean and rude. Just as arrogant and grand and all that. Amen. But I want to say I, I thank God for you, Pastor. It's a free house and you make me feel so welcome to just be who I am in God. And amen. I thank God for you and your spirit, this church, and all of its members. Amen. To my good friend and my best friend, one of my best friends, Pastor Adrian Aitland. Can we give God praise for him traveling with me all the way from Alabama? And he served me, and I told y'all last night, I'm glad y'all got me instead of him, because if y'all got him, y'all probably wouldn't want to hear me. He's a preacher. He is a preacher in his own right, and we praise God for him. Amen. To, to Reverend Loretta Coleman. Amen. We celebrate her. Amen. 
Lord, we thank God for her ministry and to Mama Carol Foster and just to you all of God's children. I thank God for these musicians who have just made preaching easy. They have made it so easy. And so uh, we thank God to Pastor Fluid. Amen. And all of those who sung, everybody who's played a part, can we just clap our hands for all of them tonight? Amen. So we'll figure out that I hold you too long. I know that the hour is already far spent. And so for the benefit of brevity, I will not uh, hold you very long tonight, but there is a word from the Lord. And so I want to I want to go to 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. I want to go to 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Amen. And I've, again, when we're in revival, it's very important that you're sensitive to the Spirit of God uh, so that you make sure you preach the right word for the people in the house. And so a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago, rather, a good friend of mine said he went to visit the nursing home. And as he was there visiting the nursing home, they were singing songs. In mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and as they were singing songs, some one of the older ladies bust out and started singing, Soon and very soon, <laughs> we're going to see the king. Amen. I want to make sure that y'all didn't miss it, brother. <laughs> Amen. I want to make sure that I make the right selection tonight. <laughs> make the proper selection. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We pray that that is the proper selection from the Lord. Out of verse number 7. And I'm looking before I start preaching. Y'all just take the brakes off of me because I just feel like letting God have his way tonight. Amen. I feel like that somebody needs his word tonight. And so yeah. just listen to your amens and your hallelujahs. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7. Right. Gives us this intelligence. He says, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, not I'm going to take it from you, but he says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. He says, therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10 says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions. Anybody here been persecuted? In distresses for Christ's sake. My shout is right there, that last false. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. Amen. Thus is the word of our God. God, we thank you. We honor you. We love you. We give you all adoration and we praise you. Speak to us now. It's time for us to step back. You step forward. I don't say less of me and more of you. I say but none of me and all of you. Speak to your people. Somebody needs to hear your word tonight. So let the meditation of my heart, amen, be acceptable in thy sight. Let my words be what you want them to be. And when it's all said and done, we don't want to get any glory out of it. But you get all of the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody say, hey neighbor. For a few moments, the preacher want to preach about the thorn is necessary. The thorn is necessary. Paul says, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. Uh, my brothers and sisters, a few years ago, as uh, Reverend Coleman shared with you, I do have four children, and they are now ages 15, 10, 3, and as of two days ago, a one-year-old baby girl. But before we had our last two children, uh, my son, who's now 15, was approximately 8 or 9, and my uh, second son, who's now 10, was uh, a few years younger than him. And one night during the summer, they said, Daddy, we want to sleep downstairs in the den. It was the summertime, and they wanted to get their mattress from the bunk beds upstairs 
bring it downstairs, lay it on the living room floor, and sleep in the living room all night long. And so it was, I told them and gave them permission to do so, and as everybody who's pretty much grown up in a black household know, when you get up on Saturday morning, it's time to clean up. So I woke them up, I said, you gotta get your mattress, you gotta get all of that, take it back upstairs, put your stuff up because it's time to clean. I left them and they were trying to lift that mattress up the stairs. I left them and about five minutes later I came back and they were still struggling trying to get that mattress up the stairs. I watched Dorian get the top and I watched Corbin get the bottom and he'd try to push and one would try to pull. I watched Corbin get the top and Dorian get the bottom and I watched one of them try to push and the other try to pull. I watched Dorian and Corbin both get at the top, try to pull it, but no matter what they tried, they were unable to get the mattress to the top of the stairs. Finally, my eldest son Dorian looked at me and he said, Daddy, we've tried everything that we know how to do and we just can't get this mattress back upstairs. I looked at Dorian and I said something to him that I want to share with you, South Carolina. Can I share it with you? I looked at him and I told him, you have not tried everything in your power because you forgot you had a father who was standing here waiting to help you. That's how I missed it. Let me see if I'm going to win this over here. I told him you didn't try everything in your power because you just forgot you had a father who was standing here waiting. Oh, okay, let me just preach it where we all can reach it. There's a few of you who are dealing with some struggles and some issues and some weight and some things in your life that you think are unbearable, but you just simply forgot that you've got a daddy. Y'all, some of y'all still think I'm proud about a mattress. You've got a daddy. That's standing there just waiting on you to help you. And that's the reason why some of y'all ought to be shouting tonight because you can take a trip down memory lane and testify the only reason why I'm here right now is because I was connected to another power source. The only reason why I ain't shot nobody, cuss nobody out, and kill nobody is because I'm connected to a power source that what I can't, I'm gonna get happy all by myself. What I can't do for myself, I I got somebody. After all, ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what God is. Y'all sit down, you make me nervous when you stand up like that. That's all God is to us. He's an extra power source who possesses the propensity and the power to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. This is exactly what Paul suggests to us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, that when he starts writing in verse number 7, he starts talking about the thorn or the issue or the struggle that he possesses, but by the time we get to verse number 12, we see here that he said, I'd rather just go ahead and praise God for the struggle, because when I am weak, God don't lose strength just because I feel weak, he still got all power. He says, he says, he says, watch this, very simple, I want to give it to you, that God has given me a thorn in my flesh. 